Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro and in today's video it's about uh, an Amiga 500 and as you can see my Santa here is uh, playing around with the deluxe paint and uh, drawing something on the machine. So we are now well underway, halfway in this calendar and I hope you had enjoyed it so far. It's been a lot of work but I really enjoy creating it and hope you too like to see my videos. I just want to mention that if you want to see another Christmas calendar or advent calendar about the retro computers, you should take a look at the Koiro Retro Innovations channel. His channel is about uh, old PCs and he uh, reviews an old PC each day from the 1st to the 24th. So check it out, I'll link to it in the description. So this is one of my Amiga 500s. I have uh, several but uh, this is the most pretty one and uh, <laughs> the one that works best. And uh, because of that I don't use it a lot. Uh, it's been stored away since I cleaned it and recapped it in uh, October uh, 2019. And this is an uh, unmodified uh, Amiga. The only thing it has is the 512k uh, memory expansion. So this now has uh, one megabyte of RAM. And what you see now on the screen is actually the Amiga running uh, Deluxe Paint 4, which I actually loaded from uh, an old floppy that I had uh, in the late 80s and it is still uh, working so <laughs> I don't think I have uh, used this particular floppy disk since uh, 1989 or something. So this video is actually going to be about uh, deluxe paint and uh, the reason behind that is that uh, <laughs> that was a program I used a lot uh, back in the day. Uh, there's not many pictures uh, I found on my floppies that I looked through, so um, yeah, here's a few. And this is a high-res image, and I can hear the disk, the floppy disk is uh, struggling a bit, but uh, it does load. So what I actually want to do in this video is to uh, take a trip down the memory lane uh, back to uh, the 80s and uh, take a look at the Deluxe Paint 1. But uh, for doing that, I'm actually going to use uh, the WinUIA emulator that I have already uh, covered in another video. And uh, the reason I do that is because it's a lot easier than having to find old floppy disks or uh, connect an external GoTag drive or anything uh, <laughs> to run. So uh, it's a lot easier and uh, it uh, also gives a lot better pictures in the video when I do a capture from uh, the Windows machine. And one more thing, uh, this t-shirt I'm wearing now, it's a Team DeLorean t-shirt and uh, the reason behind that is that uh, <laughs> this is uh, my team at work. We are called uh, Team DeLorean, so I'm gonna send a greeting uh, to them. <laughs> Hope they see this. <laughs> so here I am in uh, the Win UIA emulator and I have uh, attached uh, Deluxe Paint 1 uh, on DF0 and uh, as you can see in the background here it's uh, loaded and I have uh, loaded the King Tutankhamun picture which is well known uh, graphics for uh, Deluxe Paint or D-Paint as it's uh, commonly referred to. So um, I'm about to <laughs> destroy this <laughs> picture now. And uh, the different versions of uh, D-Paint uh, you can actually download, uh, find online on the internet. I found it here on uh, the planetemu.net site and uh, here's a lot of stuff for Amiga. So um, I downloaded the Deluxe Paint 1 uh, ADF file and uh, loaded it right into the emulator. So Deluxe Paint was uh, created by Dan Silva for Electronic Arch in uh, 1985 and it originally came for the Amiga 1000. Later it was actually ported to other platforms, uh, MS-DOS and uh, Atari ST and, and the Apple II GS. When you have downloaded the Deluxe Paint 1 uh, ADF file and attached to the emulator and uh, boot from that uh, floppy disk, it will boot into uh, Amiga DOS like this. And uh, to actually start it, you just uh, type uh, Deep Paint. You can, of course, boot uh, into Workbench first and then start it from the Workbench. 
So it starts up and loads uh, this uh, test image here, which you can uh, clear out. And uh, it has already loaded uh, yeah, many common colors here, so you can start drawing right away. All right, let's take a little uh, walkthrough of what you can do in Deluxe Paint. But, uh, but I can't say that I know this program in and out anymore. It's been a long time, but uh, actually you, you can find the manual online if you want to take a peek at that and uh, learn more about the program. And here is the manual for Deluxe Paint 2. So uh, yeah, it has a little bit more of functions than uh, Deluxe Paint 1, but uh, it's almost the same. So I have already drawn a little image here and <laughs> yeah, it's some rainbowy art. <laughs> All right, when you start uh, Deluxe Paint, you come into the program like this and uh, then you can either load a new picture or you can start uh, drawing right away. And uh, on the right side here is uh, the toolbox. And the program works like this. You have uh, two different colors at uh, one time that you can uh, use. Now I have selected uh, white as color one, so I can change that to red. And the other color I can use uh, with the right button on the mouse. I can select, uh, for example, green. So you do the different operations with the two different colors with the left or right mouse button. So now I can uh, start drawing uh, freehand with uh, the left button and that will of course be red. And if I use the right button then it will be green. And if you clear the picture then uh, it will clear it to the background color green. On the top here in the toolbox uh, are the brushes. Uh, these are either round or square or uh, dotted brushes can change to uh, the squared one and uh, draw with that. So if you do a mistake, you can undo by pressing the undo function here and uh, it can only undo the last operation. And I have uh, several times uh, pressed control set on my keyboard, but uh, that does not work here. <laughs> so let's change back to green and uh, we can draw some green over this red circle. Isn't that nice? <laughs> then you have some uh, other drawing tools. Uh, this tool is uh, dotted uh, drawing and uh, this one draws a consecutive freehand uh, line. And uh, this one draws a straight line. And this one draws a curved line. And then you have a bucket fill. So if you now draw a red line here and make a closed area inside here, we can use the bucket fill to fill that with, for example, blue. So as you can see, it's rather intuitive if you have used bitmap graphic tools before on Windows or other machines. Next tool is this airbrush tool and yeah, let's select yellow and uh, we can use uh, the smaller brush. Yeah, it just sprays <laughs> colors all over. All right, so the next tool is uh, the box. And as you can see, it is uh, divided in uh, two by this line. And uh, the upper left part is for drawing a box. And if you press the lower uh, right side, you get a filled box. Same goes for this, you can draw a filled or unfilled uh, circle. And this one is almost the same, it's an ellipse. So uh, let's make a little ellipse or a filled ellipse. So this is becoming a rather interesting uh, piece of art, don't you think? And the next tool is a filled or unfilled polygon. And a polygon is a shape consisting of many edges. So let's make a gray polygon up here. And then you just start with one point and draw a shape until you reach the starting point. So that's an unfilled polygon. Let's make a filled one.
All right. So if you don't like uh, the color you used, you can uh, of course use uh, the fill function, change it. All right. So um, the next function is uh, this one. It is a brush function, and that means that you can select a brush from uh, the drawing. So uh, if I want to make a brush out of uh, this pattern here, I do like that and it copies it and you can use that as a brush to copy the elements you have already drawn or to make some uh, fancy effect like this. <laughs> then we have the text tool uh, where you can write the text. So let's use white for a text and you can just type on your keyboard. And when you have uh, the text tool, you can uh, change the font. If you go to the font menu and uh, load the fonts, it will uh, show you the fonts that are currently in your system. If you have uh, installed more fonts, it will uh, show more fonts than this. And then you go back to the font menu and it has loaded the fonts. So let's try this uh, Garnet 16, write something more. Yeah, <laughs> and of course you can uh, again use the brush select to make a brush out of that. All right, I think this uh, drawing uh, got a little bit uh, crowded, so um, I'm gonna clear it out. So now I want to copy this and make it a brush. And then I can change uh, the color. Let's say I want the yellow one. And then I go to object or press F2 and it becomes yellow. So now I can make a little uh, nice uh, a logo here. Cool, isn't it? <laughs> okay, the next tool I'm going to show is uh, the magnifier. If you want to do uh, pixel perfect adjustments, you can of course do that. And if you want to zoom in even more, you can press this one. And you use uh, the right mouse button to zoom out again. All right, I have loaded a Christmas uh, picture here. And uh, the picture is actually bigger than what you see on the screen because uh, the toolbox and the menu covers parts of it. If you uh, want to see the outside or draw underneath the menu and the toolbox, you need to press F10 and then you reveal uh, the whole uh, picture. Okay, I'm going to clear this now and uh, I want to show you the grid function uh, and that divides uh, the drawing area into a grid and that divides uh, the drawing into an invisible grid and uh, you can use that to make special effects if you use uh, the dotted uh, drawing tool. You see now I draw around uh, and only the points at the grid are filled in. And you can define the size of the grid by right clicking on the grid and uh, making it larger. So now when I draw here, you can see that the grid is larger and uh, yeah, you get kind of a <laughs> nice effect out of that. Let's turn off the grid and uh, the next tool then is uh, the mirror tool and that lets you draw in a mirror like this. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. So this tool is actually called the symmetry tool and you can change the settings uh, for either mirror or cyclic and uh, the number of uh, repetitions you want. Let's say I want a cyclic three. Yeah. You see now it's uh, three copies. <laughs> so you can see everything in uh, Deluxe Paint is actually a brush. Let's make this uh, text uh, brush again and uh, copy that and turn off uh, the mirroring and uh, change the color to red and press F2. We can copy that and if we want to reuse that later in other uh, pictures you can save the brush so i'm gonna save it now to an empty 
proper disk on uh, DF1, call it uh, DF1 logo. So now it is saved as uh, logo there and I can change the brush and I can now uh, load it again. So if we go to DF1, there it is. You can select that and load it and you have the brush. So that covers uh, most of the basic functions uh, in Deluxe Paint 1. Uh, of course, I didn't uh, talk about uh, the color palette. To change the colors, you go to uh, Picture Color Control Palette or press P. And now you can change uh, all uh, the different colors that you have uh, available and make a new one. And let's see if we change, uh, yeah, you can see I changed uh, one of the grayscale colors to uh, this light green. And now you see the actual picture changes as well because you have a limited amount of uh, colors. Of course, later uh, versions of Deluxe Paint, uh, you can use uh, a lot more colors and uh, also uh, high res uh, pictures. And this one only works with uh, low res, I think. <laughs> I didn't actually find a way to change uh, the resolution, uh, however the machine I'm currently running on now is an Amiga 1200, so it uh, of course uh, supports uh, higher resolution than this. Besides that, there are some additional uh, tools you can use. You have uh, the smear tool, uh, which lets you take uh, a brush like this and you can smear the pixels out of the <laughs> out of their current location and also you have the shade so this tool lets you do some shading you see the effect when i draw here i can select uh, the round one then we have uh, the blend function and um, yeah that depends on some uh, color cycles i'm not really sure how it works but uh, yeah, you can see you can uh, uh, obviously blend the colors of the same cycle. Yeah, that's some advanced uh, topic. I'm not going to go into detail about that. I think we're close to the end here. And uh, besides what I've shown you, you have uh, the regular things as uh, saving and uh, you can print. And uh, the spare is actually that you can have a second picture in memory and uh, you can swap to the spare picture with uh, the J. So now I press uh, the J button on the keyboard and it switches to another uh, picture. So if we draw something there, we can uh, have another drawing, go back to the first one. We can copy something into a brush and switch to the spare and uh, use that brush. Let's say I draw something here on uh, the spare and uh, some text so now you can bring the thing you drew on the spare into the picture in front by using spare merge in back and now you see on the background color black it took uh, all the pixels from the spare into the front picture last thing I want to show you is that you can make a little animation in these pictures by cycling the colors. And if you have a defined color cycle, you can press the tab on your keyboard and it will start cycling between these colors of the palette and you get this nice effect as you see here. All right, that was it for this video, a quick uh, walkthrough of the Deluxe Paint 1. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, Thanks for watching and a special thanks uh, to my patrons. See you. Bye bye.